How's it going? Uh, I'm Nate Morton, and uh... Sorry. Uh, this is Nate Morton, and I'm hanging out on the riser today, just kind of tweaking a few things out, getting ready to start the next uh, run of shows that we're doing. And uh, since you're over, you know what? I get requests for this sometime. So since you pop by, why don't I give you a kit tour? The computer is essential to me because for my charts or my cheat sheets that I sort of use, I have those on my computer. Uh, and similarly, if I need a sort of a, a reminder, I also have on my computer iTunes and I have all of the songs for the show or songs for the rehearsal or whatever we're doing in my iTunes playlist. And in this way, I can play iTunes through my mixer and then if I need a hint of what a song sounds like, or maybe I don't remember exactly how it begins, I can play that through my mixer, hear a little taste of it, without interrupting anyone else around me, or without everyone else having to hear it. This is a Roland TD30 drum brain. So this is the source of all the sounds that I use when I'm playing on my little Roland TD30 sort of acoustic hybrid electronic rig here. And the reason I call it acoustic hybrid electronic is because well, I guess the only acoustic thing is that I'm playing an acoustic snare drum. So this is just a Pearl uh, Firecracker snare drum, but I've also got a trigger on it so that if I want to layer the sound of the piccolo snare with something else, maybe an 808 snare or even something fatter or darker or industrial sounding if I need that for a loop that I may be emulating. So that's why I use the TD30 set here. Um, and then I'm also playing, this is an acoustic Pearl kick drum, as you can see, but it has the the Pearl True Track trigger on it, so that's where I'm, you know, that's how I'm getting access to my electronic sounds uh, for kick drums and so on. So the heartbeat of my acoustic drum set, the kick and snare. This is a 24-inch Pearl Reference Pure kick drum. This is a 14 by six and a half inch deep Pearl Sensitone Brass Alloy Snare Drum. Uh, it's kind of made in the mold of certain classic snare drums that we're familiar with. Pearl once made a Steve Ferroni signature snare drum, which they no longer make, but this is basically the closest thing to it, and I love it. Uh, it's an incredibly versatile drum. Toms across the front, 10, 12, 13. Floors, 16 and 18. And the color of this kit is actually called California Sunset. It's a color scheme that my wife came up with. Um, but uh, I think it's really cool. I think the drums look amazing. I think the drums sound amazing. Over here, I have an auxiliary kick drum. And that auxiliary kick drum, I reach with one of my pedals here on the ground. And I basically use that to mirror whatever kick drum sound is here. And in that way, I can sit in my normal acoustic position, but using this pedal, I can play that kick drum with an electronic sound. And I can even reach here and play my electronic snare drum. So from this position, I have access to the entire rig via pedals, reach over here, et cetera, and so on. So if the transition that I have to make from playing electronic drums to acoustic drums is very quick, I can access the electronic rig essentially from this position as well. Now, if I'm doing a song where the entire song is all a loop emulation, then I might do that sitting at the entire Roland rig for the, for, for the duration of the song. Okay, so moving on from the drums to the cymbals. My cymbals, I kind of had to choose based on what I felt was the most versatile. And what I feel like allows me to cover the most ground are my Zildjian K's and A Customs, which primarily everything here is K or an A Custom. Um, my hi-hats, for example, are A Custom hi-hats. Um, the, uh, the ride is a 22-inch K Custom ride. And then, as I said, the crashes and so on are A Customs primarily uh, and K's. Beyond the cymbals, I have a small collection of percussion bibs and bobs. I have a pearl uh, cowbell here. I have a pearl tambourine here. And then over on my, my little end table, I have a shaker, and uh, that rounds out my percussion rig. <laughs> oh, I forgot my cajon. Every now and then you'll see me on a cajon, and so that's when I, when I do that, that's the Pearl Sonic Boom cajon. So I haven't really talked about my hardware too much. All the hardware is all Pearl hardware, uh, and the fundamental foundation of that are my pedals. So I've got, it's almost like a, I don't even know what's going on over here, but there's a lot of pedals on the ground. Um, I've got a couple of hi-hats, and then I've got you know single pedal here, a double pedal here. So uh, this other twin pedal allows me access to the auxiliary kick drum that's sitting out there sort of to the right of the uh, primary kick drum. In addressing a show like this where 
I have to span a broad array of, of, of genres. Even beyond having the electronics, even beyond having the acoustic kit, sometimes I even need a different color. And so when I want to dry out the sound, I have my big fat snare drum mutes, which originally they started out as just big fat snare drum. And if I wanted to fatten the snare drum, right, so I can take it from this, to this, right, a much fatter, uh, lower pitch, thuddier snare drum. And so it has since, since expanded to sizes that I can use on my toms as well. So now, when I need to sort of emulate that In that way, I can get a sort of more, I mean, I'm gonna call it like a 70s sort of buddier, drier drum sound. And so that's done using my big fat snare drum mutes on the drums. So all the drums up here uh, feature Remo drum heads, which I think that they're, you know, I think the Coded Ambassador is the benchmark of all drum heads. And so I'm very fortunate to be uh, with Remo. I think they make great heads and that's why they're on the kit. So. I am with Zildjian as a cymbal company. I also happen to be with Zildjian as a stick company. And the stick that I play is a Nate Morton, Nate Morton signature stick. Uh, it's not available in stores, but basically it's a stick that's, uh, it's just about the same length as a 5B, but it has sort of a Vinny bead on it. And the taper is a little chunkier. Because what I was finding was I was playing sticks and I would grab them and I would just snap off the tip the first time I nailed the ride bell. And uh, so I, I, uh, I spoke to Kirsten and Zildjian and she was very nice to work with me, and we were able to come up with this stick, so. I love it, it feels great. It's a little bit top heavy, because I like throwing a little weight around. And, uh, and yeah, so that's my stick. The headphones that I use are called Amperiors, which Sennheiser no longer makes, but uh, they do have similar models to the Amperior, and I highly recommend them. They're actually an on-ear headphone. They get really super loud, and for an on-ear headphone, they actually isolate really, really well, and they sound tremendous, they sound great. Um, they're, they're, they're super clear low end, super clear top without being brash, and as I said, they isolate well and definitely do a great job of giving me a very even sound across my entire mix. All right, so that's my kit, guys. That's what's on the riser up here, and that's what you're hearing from week to week on the show. Thank you for checking it out. I hope that you enjoyed it, and uh, that's all I have to do today, so I'm going to get out of here. See you guys.